Hi again, uh, let's continue with the phaser tutorial. Um, we're, we're almost done. Um, in the last video, we, we, you know, we added the stars, we set up an overlap so the player can collect them. You know, in our game, you know, it's looking pretty good here. Like if I restart it, um, you can see I can collect these stars here. Right, that's pretty good. Oh, I didn't make it right. Anyway, so that's looking pretty good. Let's move on to the next part of the tutorial, right? So I'm gonna go on to the next one, and here we're gonna add a score, right? So here's how they did the scores. They made two variables, one for the score and one for the text that contains and displays the score. So text is a special kind of object in, in Phaser, and we saw that earlier in one of the earlier videos. We made a text object, so we're just gonna do that again here. Let's copy these, right? So I'll copy those, and I'm gonna go into my class, and let's talk about classes for a minute. So really what I wanna do is I want to create two variables that belong to this class, okay? And, um, and when we create a class, every class can have a special function called the constructor. And the constructor function is called when the instance of the class is created. Okay, and um, if your class extends another class like this one does, you must call super in the constructor. If you don't have the constructor like we had earlier, then it automatically calls super for you, right? So when we write the constructor in here, we have to make sure that we include super. Okay, if your class takes any parameters in the constructor, then it should pass them on with super. That doesn't affect us here, so it's hard to show that as an example, but uh, maybe we'll come back to that later. Um, but anyway, this is the correct setup here. And this is another place where you can initialize variables. So I'm gonna paste these two variables here, okay? If I declare them with the keyword var, they become local variables that are just used inside this function, but they're not available inside other functions, right? But if I put the keyword this in front of them, then I can say this score or this whatever in any any function inside the class and access that property, right? So the properties like belong to the class object, right? Um, so score text right here is a variable. I'm actually gonna define this one in, in create because we, we created everything else here and we always did it this way. We said like in create, we said this dot platforms, right? And in create player, we said this dot player. So we're gonna create the text. So I'm actually gonna delete this guy, right? But when we start the game, we'll give our, our game scene a score property and we'll initialize it with a value of zero. Okay, let's go back to the uh, to the text here, and this is how we're going to create the score text, right? So this line right here. So we'll borrow this. I'm going to copy this right here, and uh, go to create. And maybe since this is just one line of code, I'll put it at the bottom here. Um, you know, we could create a a create score text method but I think I'll just put that in here. Now remember, we want score text to belong to the class, so I'm gonna say this.scoreText. And then let's go through the parameters here and see what they do, right? So we've got this.addText to create a new text object. This is the X, this is the Y. This is the text that will be displayed, and we used this earlier um, just like this, but we stopped here. Score text or, or text can also take a, um, a, a another parameter that is an object full of options that you can set the description or how the, the text draws itself, right? So um, font size for us will be 32 pixels. Um, fill will be black. Okay, and you could change the color here. These are just pretty much the same um, property values you'd use with CSS. So if you're familiar with CSS, you can use any CSS here, right? It's gotta be quoted though, it's gotta be a string, okay? So um, so we'll do that and uh, we'll save it and we'll take a look at our game, right? So, uh, so here I can see that the score appears here and let's watch very carefully, right? So I see the stars appear underneath the score there, which is kind of nice, right? Okay, and then the score says score zero, right? And that's what we put in here, okay? So the next thing we need to do is we need to make sure that every time you um, collect a star, 
that you're going to score some points and that we update the text inside score text. Okay. So let's go back to the tutorial and you can see that they, they've created a, 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 a update to the collect star function where they added two lines of code here. So we already have the collect star function and it does this line, but uh, we need to do the, these two lines, right? So we need to get our score, add 10, and then get the score text and set the text on the score text, right, to a new value, okay? So let's borrow this and, um, and we'll go find um, collect star down here and we'll paste this in. And if you recall, a score belongs to this instance so we'll say this dot score and then score text also belongs to this so we'll put we'll put this dot score text right okay and then we'll save that and we'll run the code so let's collect some stars right so there we go we got that one uh oh man i'm not getting any points right let's check i think i forgot something right um, so I'll go in here and you can see I got two errors probably from the two stars I collected and it says can't find variable score on game scene line 100, right? Oh yeah, because I've got this dot score here, but then I just wrote score right there. So I got to make sure that I change that to this dot score. And now let's give it another try, right? So I can run over here. Sometimes you have to click in the window to make sure the keyboard works. Oh, there's 10, 20 points. 30 40 points right so looks like everything's working okay so anyway thanks for watching i hope that explains a few things and um, good luck with your games and then we'll continue and finish up the tutorial um, i think there's just a couple steps left yeah there's just the bombs right you gotta you gotta get to the bomb section right so anyway thanks for watching